Our first live stream of our high performance series is literally teaching you about the habits of success. You know, a, a long time ago, I was taught by a really great mentor that had said, you know, success is in the details. And because success leaves clues, the people that you want to embody or the people that like you want their life, if you will, or aspects of their life, take a look at their habits. Because in a lot of ways, what I'm having a lot of our inner circle members do people that are getting coaching of becoming this high performer in their life, I'm having them do their takeaways because I want to make sure that you are understanding fully what it means to be consistent, what it means to truly appreciate the journey, and also what it means to have someone in your corner where he is specifying things for you that speak to you. Okay. So with this live series, what I want to do is kind of looking at the five traits of things that I'm seeing of the most successful high performers that I'm working with. And so a lot of these people stem anywhere from uh, being professional athletes to being professionals in their lives, and then even being professionals in their homes. And so I want to go through a little bit more of like what it takes to what it means to be a high performer. And so we kind of talked about different varying fields of, of those types of people. So these people are not just athletes, entrepreneurs. Uh, they're not just people who are chasing dreams. They are people who are truly embodying this person that they need to become. You know, one of our inner circle members mentioned something yesterday to me that really stuck to him. And it's a question that I ask myself all the time. You know, when you're, when you're doing these habits or, or you're living this life, is your future self proud of you? You know, I got asked this a while ago, like, hey, who's your hero? And I totally took this from Matthew McConaughey. Like he has this really great speech of like, my hero is me in five years, right? I want to make sure that I appease him. And then the five years happens like, hey, did you become your hero? Like not yet. It's that person in five years. And so in a lot of ways, these habits or these things or this lifestyle that I want you to really begin to embody is truly making sure that you are creating opportunities for your life or for you rather in five years to be like, yo, you're doing a great job. Like you are going through the journey that you need to go through in order to be successful. And so when I look at a high performer, it's someone who is truly able to, to step into that power of, let me navigate these little self-care deposits. Let me eat better. Let me be more active. Let me concentrate on sleep. Let me concentrate on my most healthiest and important connections in my life because those things matter. I think I can tell you this, and you've seen this probably across the board. You know, when we look at addiction, you know, these people that we that we look at as like movie stars or artists, you know, there's a huge addiction community with that because there's a lot of disconnect. And so in our lives right now, what I want to teach you how to do is looking at the traits in order for you to step out a bit more authentically and really normalize struggle because mental health matters, right? If you are struggling, like let's first normalize it. So let's get to a point where you are truly understanding that you are not going to be in this place that you're in right now for good, but you do have a choice to continue down that path or just truly seek something else, seek something more fulfilling and authentic to you. Okay. So in a lot of these ways, as we're going through these traits, I kind of just want you to take notes. If a comment comes up or some feedback that you want to throw in, in the comment section, please, please, please feel free to do so. Okay. So let's go ahead and go through these five traits uh, a bit more in detail. So trait number one, the thing that I see across the board for these high performers, for these people who are truly stepping out in, in authenticity, not only just for their health, but their mental and emotional well-being, is that they are willing to admit that their life beforehand was not sustainable. Okay. I'm sure some of us have been in situations where it's like, Hey, money is good. Marriage might be good. Um, but I'm, I'm playing it small in a lot of ways. And I know this is likely not sustainable. So the first trait that these people have is they're willing to take some ownership behind, Hey, what is happening right now in this moment might be helping me to skate by, but I know it's not sustainable. I know that. And so that's that's a different level of self-acceptance and self-love enough to be like, hey, I know that where I'm at right now is not sustainable and I know that I need some help. And so if you're asking yourself that right now, take a look at your habits. Take a look at how you sleep. Take a look at how you connect with your family. Take a look at your relationship with work, right? Being a workaholic is not always a great thing if you're heavily disconnected to your health your family and everything else. And so we want to take a look at these things and see if we can take ownership behind them because high performers do just that. Okay. 
Number two, high performers start to develop an identity-based habit, right? So they start to truly embody and tell themselves different messages. How many of us have been caught in the stories or the past conditioning that we tell ourselves of, I'm just not active. I'm just too tired. I just don't have enough time right? I'm just too stressed. I'm just too far gone. And so with this piece, like it's a really great mindset shift because what I'm inviting you to do is to start developing a different personal identity. Because at first you're going to get a lot of extrinsic motivation. You know, when people step foot in, in, in the program, they, they get really, really excited because there's 25 plus other people who are working on similar things. You can see their struggles. You got a coach, you know, you got all the things you need to be successful. We're just working on the mindset, but the true shift is when they start to form that identity of I'm not made of glass. I can do this. I can be challenged. I can be coachable. And so when we look at these habits, like we're, we're truly trying to embody and trying to change our identity behind, I can do hard things. I tell my five-year-old that all the time. And really in, in so many ways, like it's a reminder for myself. Like if she gets really frustrated, like she got into this dance class uh, the last couple of months and she's like, daddy, I don't like the class. It's too hard. Right. And so I had a conversation with her and, and really in so many ways, it's kind of a pep talk for myself to be like, Hey, you can do hard things, right? It's okay. You're not going to be great or perfect at everything. And it's the same thing with you. You yourself, you can do hard things. You just have to really start to develop that identity in order to do so. And in order to do so, you just might need a mentor to help you with that. You just might need to see other people be successful so that you yourself can have the type of self-love to be able to enact that, to be and to embody that person. Okay. All right. Numero tres. They throw themselves into the process. Right. And so I'm not saying like you drop everything and just focus on the habits, but listen, your habits are going to display a lot of your lifestyle. So even if we look at different aspects of helping you to be successful, we have to start somewhere. And in order to start somewhere, you truly have to throw yourself into that, into that habit. Right. So even if it's just walking a mile a day, I was having a conversation with one of our high performers yesterday, like, Hey, even if you concentrated on walking a mile a day for 365 days, that's 365 miles that you weren't doing in 2020. Okay. And so this is what I'm asking you to do is starting to throw yourself in the process. And truly, again, this is where you get to get out of that, that really famous cognitive distortion of all or nothing, but truly have gratitude for the little wins that you have. People, <laughs> it sounds so freaking granola. It, it, it sounds ridiculous when I say it out loud, only because I say it so much. And some people are like, oh, you know, this is like toxic positivity. It's not toxic positivity. What I'm asking you to do is to get out of your head, remove yourself from the equation and actually be present. Because in most cases, when you're constantly focusing on the outcome, you are focusing on the future and you're focusing on what has happened in the past when you didn't reach that outcome. What I'm asking you to do is to be more mindful in the moment of what you have control of. And in the moment, what you have control of in from the aspect or the example of walking is literally one foot in front of the freaking other. Okay. All right. Number four, they allow themselves to fail. I mean, <laughs> I love saying this to a lot of, a lot of our high performing clients. Like, you know, one of them, I, I was, I was talking with this person the other day and <laughs> this person was talking about like how, like they haven't done anything and they feel like a failure. Right. And so like they, they tried our new strength conditioning program and it was just a big struggle. Like it was a struggle to, to truly get the movements down, to truly ask questions. And that's just part of learning. Right. And so what I said to this person, I was like, all right, cool. Like you got, you got kids, right. And like, yeah, like, okay. So when your kid was starting to walk, um, the first time when they got up and fell, were you just like with your significant other, like, you know what, this kid's not a walker. Like, I, dang, like we, we don't have a walker. Like, I don't, I don't know what to do. So I, I, I guess, I guess they failed. Like they're just not going to walk the rest of their lives. Like, no, like any self-respecting person, like, no, like get up, you can do this. They would cheer them on. This is what you have to do for yourself. Like you truly have to start to become a little bit more of your biggest fan. And if you're not in the moment, that's why you might need some mentorship or some community or something like that to truly help you because you're going to fail. You're going to, because what that shows me is like, if someone is failing, they are being uncomfortable. 
they are not being in that status quo. They are, they're truly looking to live and not just exist. So when I tell you like you can do hard things, part of the caveat to that is like, Hey, that, that is likely going to be said after you fail at something. Okay. And so you're supposed to fail and high performers do just that. Okay. And our fifth one, and this is probably one of the biggest ones that I think is just so, so apparent when I find someone who sees that evolution of truly disconnecting from the connection that they had of just like workaholism or uh, disconnecting what they had is like, Hey, I'm making great money, but like doing a crap ton of drugs. <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? It's like truly disconnecting from that and into auditing their behaviors. Right. And so we usually do that obviously through, um, weekly check-ins of like, Hey, what do you feel like is going right? What are some of the areas in which you feel like you're playing it small? You know, what questions do you have? Like, what do you need? And so by doing that, you get to audit your behaviors and you get to audit what you need in your life. And in order to remain coachable is to truly sort of set your, your ego aside and be more vulnerable and intimate with yourself in that process. Because in most cases, as you gain clarity about how you interact with behaviors or how you interact with goal setting or things or fulfillment that you want in your life, a lot of that has to do with making sure that you are clear on your purpose and you are clear on why you want to do what you want to do. You hear me talk about this all the time. I rarely will take a client who just wants a six pack. Rarely. Because if I start asking more questions, it becomes much more about, and this is where the tears happen. It becomes much more about, yo, because I just want to feel loved. I just want to feel cared for. I want to feel understood. I want to feel seen. I don't think that I've ever had that. And it's, it's across the board with business, with anything else like, hey, I, I have all this money or I, I, I'm doing really well, but you know what? Like, I'm not happy. This is where fulfillment plays a really big role. And this is where remaining coachable and remaining in a place where, where you might be okay with the idea that you need a mentor. That's that first step. Again, we go back to like, they're willing to admit that their life is not sustainable. Okay. So now that we have that, you know, what do we want to do? with all of that information. Yo, good morning to you as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, so oh, before we do that, let me answer this question right here. Hell yeah, what do you identify as a huge factor in my success? Um, I would honestly say like my, and I got asked this the other day, so my morning routine started off as something that I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm, I'm wasting a lot of time. I feel like I'm, I, I'm doing all of these things, but I'm not seeing any progress. But when I truly started to work on myself, when I truly started to take a look at my sleep hygiene, for me, strength training is a really big piece because it's so metaphorical for me, like time under tension, like you can do hard things, like your body can can throw, can do really great things. A huge factor of, of my personal success has literally been much more about telling my story right? Telling my story that, you know, the life that I was living was not sustainable. You know, the huge factor of my success has been consistency. In most cases, I don't fuck around with my routines. You know, there's travel, there's other things like that happens. And therein lies like the other factors, like a crap ton of self-compassion, a crap ton of self-compassion. So for me, those are probably the three biggest factors behind like what has helped me be my own success story. Right. And so that's something that I want to make sure that you all understand as well. So now that you have all this information, like, what do you need to do? And here's what I, where I want to implore you to be vulnerable. Here's where I want to implore you to truly take a look and say, am I doing what I'm doing right now? Is it sustainable? OK, so this is your first assignment. This is where you get to be vulnerable in your process. This is where you get to become that person who is not just simply existing, but living into that 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 power that you have in order to be the high performer that possibly your marriage needs, uh, your kids need, your family needs, your workplace, whatever. I think we can all agree that if we're keeping our side of the street clean and we are truly stepping into our most authentic power and we're taking care of ourselves, we're eating great, we're exercising, we feel great about our bodies, we're doing all these things for ourselves, like other people get to benefit from that. Because the other caveat to that is if we are not doing great, not taking care of ourselves, not sleeping well, drinking more, smoking more, eating more, like we become 
different versions of ourselves that isn't always helpful towards the greater good in our home, in our workplace, and most importantly, in our most important home <laughs> up here. <laughs> All right. So there's your first assignment. I want you to let me know. Comment down below which one's hard for you. Or even like comment on one area that you're like, you know what? I actually have been really diving into this. And this is how I feel about it. Okay. I hope this is helpful. I'm back. I love these live streams. Much love to you all. There's going to be a little bit of changes uh, stepping into June with the name of the group, the messages. Um, the message is still the same, right? Let me teach you how to be your most authentic self. Let me teach you how to be the high performer that your your body, your mind, and, and your community needs. Um, but there will be a couple of changes, new podcast title, a bunch of really cool things that I'm excited about. So uh, I'm back. Much love to you all. Have a great weekend. Later.